We find ourselves in the Marine Test Center Italo Monzino, the cranky test center located in San Giorgio di Nagaro, between Trieste and Venice. It is winter, but the testing center is open. It never closes, just like us at the boat show. So, also on this cold day, we are getting ready to navigate. Cranky is a grand shipyard. In fact, it is one of the best in the world for construction processes, and its facilities are the best I've ever seen. Now, if you think that a well-constructed company deserves to be considered when you are going to buy a boat, stay on board with us for this trial. This is an Endurance 33. The hull at this moment is the biggest in the range of sport vessels, with an overall length of 10.25 meters. In Italy, it's certified as a minor unit. It is a model for all seasons, timeless, suitable for many different markets, and since it's a cranky, it deserves to be analyzed in detail so as not to miss anything they've done. The owner of the company, Aldo Cranky, has great nautical experience with a clear sense of practicality that shows through his creations. Just look at the bow with the high railing, the open pulpit to facilitate boarding, and these baskets for the fenders. This way, they can be put away in a moment and they don't clutter the lockers. The walkways don't take up much space in the cockpit, which is quite large and well sheltered by the front windshield. Then there are the long side windows, which are designed to give better protection from the wind. The roll bar has a specific function, makes it easy to transform the cockpit, shielding it from the sun or weather or closing it for the night. When sailing, it is pleasant to lie on the stern bathing in the sun while being caressed by the wind. Here, they have placed a handrail that also serves to hold you as you pass from bow to stern. There are infinite details that contribute to safety or improve comfort or simply make this boat more practical to use. Don't these side windows make you want to take a look below deck? Cranky is a master at finding solutions in habitability. They use spaces and volumes that are not generally taken advantage of. Dedicating time and attention to the design, as well as to the building techniques, it's led to the creation of a very functional boat. In the cabin, there is a small kitchen. The dinettes can be converted into a bunk and therefore another sleeping area. The bathroom is high, spacious and well ventilated, and it comes with a separate box shower. Now, since we are about to try it, I suggest you hold on tight. There are handrails placed everywhere. Manetta. Throttle gas. It's a sport boat and it starts as such. Did you hear that roar? What kind of engines do you think those are? They sound like diesel, but the pickup is really impressive. Abbiamo 600 cavalli, due motori Volvo Penta da 300 cavalli. We have 600 horses, two Volvo Penta 300 horsepower. They say they can even install two gasoline engines from 350 horses. That seems like a lot to me, but let's see what is safe with these engines. Then later, we can do subsequent considerations. The fact is that it seems to me to be a very fast speedboat. 
I don't even realise that I have below a cabin so important, so big, with so many deck fittings, because the boat is very agile, fast, responsive, sporty, fun. So now I will calm down and go back to give you some interesting navigation data for those who like the more technical aspects. Let's start from the bridge. It's very well organised. Here we are in front of two huge gauges, which give me the speed of each engine. And then on these other consoles, you can see the engine temperature and fuel level. This is also very easy to control, separated from the other instruments, so you won't get confused. OK, Okay. now I slow down. I don't touch the flap, I don't touch the trim, and I look for the minimum planing speed. Here, it is 12 knots at 1,900 RPM per engine. Un tocco di gas, ma... Poco poco e troviamo l'assetto giusto. A touch of gas, but really just a little, and we find the right trim setting. A navigation with optimal cruising speeds, 20 knots. Overall fuel consumption is 44 litres an hour, not much. You do the math on the data to plan your cruise. The fact is, I feel she has the urge to run, so why not do it? It's winter, there is no one on the sea, there aren't even waves. Three thousand RPM is still a cruising speed for these diesel engines and we have a speed of 30 knots. Look how wonderful, look at the ease of control, even in a sudden narrow turn. It's very reactive. More gas, 3,600 RPM per engine. But I hear a whistle. Either we have canaries on board or maybe, maybe it's the roll bar. I'd adjust the trim a little. But it's not necessary because the boat is able to find its own correct setting, even at maximum speed, 37 knots, fantastic. We return to the original question. Is it better to have this type of propulsion or two gas engines, maybe 350 horses? I am sure that this boat is capable of carrying a great time, even more powerful engines. But if you choose the petrol, remember that they will consume at least double, especially if you love to push on the gas. At cruising speed, it may even be higher, instead of about 50%. We arrived at the conclusion of the test, but instead of ending, I would like to start. I wish it was summer. I would go on a cruise, perhaps with the family. It would be nice, right? Yeah.